Good afternoon everybody. It's uh, October 19 and it's quite wet so don't mind the raindrops on the lens today. Um, yeah, we've had a couple of days of rain, pretty heavy rain, which uh, brought the river level up and that's great because in the last few episodes you've seen how challenging it is to fish in low and clear water conditions and usually once the river comes up fish would start moving, right? All the salmon start moving upstream. But at the same time, uh, water becomes dirty, so the river is not really fishable. And the best time is when the river starts dropping, which is basically this morning, but I couldn't get out this morning. So now I'm stuck in the afternoon and it's still raining quite a bit. So I think the level is gonna rise again and hopefully clarity will stay somewhat all right for the next few hours and uh yeah let's see target species is coho salmon again so whenever you have the river level rising the coho salmon will start moving upstream and as the river level drops these fish will slow down the movement and eventually will stay at the runs and that's when they'll start biting again Whew. kind of out of shape so yeah, so the river level spiked for the second time last night and it's been dropping steadily all night and this morning apparently was quite good, so we'll see. Oh, slippery, slippery rocks. Whew. Okay. <laughs> and the best thing about fishing the second half of October uh, when it's wet like this, the crowd kind of dissipates. Um, not necessarily there's less people fishing. Of course, you know, some people don't like the wet weather, they'll stay home, but now that there's more water, people more spread out, so the pressure is more um, spread out, which is great. Oh my goodness, it's not a single person here. Okay, let's go. I feel good. Here's a lesson. Here we have a run, pretty long, and um, if you dissect this run a little bit, you can see the faster water outlay in the middle. You have a slower water right here. And this slower water kind of spreads out a little bit more to the other side as it gets towards the tail out. Cold salmon love this kind of slow water, and that's kind of what I'm focusing on. Um, that fast water out there is more for Chinook salmon. You can get cold salmon out there too, but definitely that slow water is ideal. Quite a bit more water today. The water is reasonably clear. It's a few feet of visibility. I'm gonna take my homemade spoon off. I'm gonna chuck a spinner right now. I brought this new spinner from Prime Lure. Totally chartreuse, and uh, we'll see. I think it'll work. If there are cold down there, they should bite right away. That's uh, you just you know, under certain conditions, you just know that the fish will bite if there are fish. I can't believe there's nobody here. Okay, here we go. Um, other things I'm looking for is I'm looking for fish as well. So cold salmon tend to rise up, they'll show their back as they sit in the area. And if I do see that, I get really excited. I'm not looking for fish jumping around, I'm just looking for fish kind of discreetly showing their back. Okay, I'm gonna focus on the slow water right here now. And then we're gonna work our way down to that uh, wider, shallower water down there as well. You don't want to stay in the same spot all the time if you're not getting fish.
Oh, that spinner looks so good in the water. Hopefully it's not too bright. That was cast number three. Oh, nobody home. <laughs> it is a little water for them to move around, so, you know, you gotta move around to find those fish. And these fish are moving as well when there's that much water. So, yeah, you gotta, now it's more about moving around, trying to find fish instead of being stationary, waiting, you know, targeting fish that are sitting there. I just saw one coming up. That ah, looks like a bigger fish. Not sure what that was. In that fast water. Gosh, just waiting for a coho to smash it. There's one, there's one that's right beside. Oh, that fish, oh, came off. No, that fish was right there. They came, I saw it grabbing it. <laughs> Damn it. Um, okay, so you see, I'm losing a little fish, but there's another one. Oh no, that's a big fish on the back. I don't want that one. Yeah. See what happens when you're casting to that deeper, well, that faster water? The Chinook salmon grabs it. And now I'm, oh, it came off. Oh, good. No, no, it didn't come off. Ah, uh, now I'm gonna lose that spinner. That spinner was working well. I don't wanna lose it. Ah, no. Bye bye. Ah, down it. Crap. I'm not gonna get that fish back with this light tackle. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Oh, no. Lost, lost the spinner. So sad. And now the coho is right here. So close to shore. Ah. Uh, damn it. Well, that was not a very good start. Okay, now I gotta tie a new leader on there. Okay, so my mistake before was casting just a little too far and fell hooking that big Chinook salmon. Next cast gonna be much closer because as you can see, the first fish I hooked is right beside the shore and these fish love to sit in that slow water, even though it's shallow, right? And I actually saw that fish coming up, grabbing it near the surface. Ah, oh. okay, what a letdown. Okay, next up, we're gonna put another spinner on. We're gonna put the, I have, I have an orange one here somewhere. Oh, this one right here. This one's kind of like bent a little bit, but it caught me quite a few fish lately. I'm getting all excited because I know I'm kind of racing against time. It's raining quite a bit, which means Water's not gonna stay nice for a long time. Well, you never know, but you definitely wanna take advantage of this. Come on, fish. Let's go. Look at this rain. Just keeps on coming. Oof. That's what drives the crowd away too. So, kind of nice having the whole run to myself. This is hopeless. Let's go to the other side of that log.
trying well my homemade spoons here. <laughs> Oh, this one. Oh, that's a coho. Oh, around right the other side. Good thing I decided to cast to the other side, eh? <laughs> See? Wayne Dell. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. Lining, too much lining, too much lining. There I go. Okay, I think that's a hashy fish. Oh, it is. Oh, nice silver fish. Okay. That was exciting. <laughs> I've been doing all these short casts right in front of me, not getting any bites, and decided to whip one all the way across. And look, this fish grabbed it pretty much as soon as the, um, the lures started turning. Okay. Well, that's good. So yeah, that kind of just shows you gotta cast everywhere. First, I tried really closing. That's where I thought the fish would be. But um, besides that first one, haven't really had anything else. And then I said, hmm, I'm like, let's cast all the way across. And right away, go one. Maybe there are more? Just gotta keep trying. There, first one of the day. Not bad, not, not too big, just right size for cold smoking. I like it. Well, that was a really quick outing. After I landed that one fish, the water conditions actually degraded really fast, so I went home pretty soon after that. I wanted to get this episode out as soon as possible, simply because I've covered a fair amount of information on how to get better at cold sand fishing, and that is the number one question I get throughout October and November. If you ask me when is my favorite time to go cold sand fishing in the fall in Chilliwack, I would say the last two weeks of October and early November. Even though the abundance of cold salmon is much higher in the first part of October, I find that I usually have more success in the second half of the season, simply because it's a lot wetter, it's colder, there's less people fishing around, so fishing pressure is quite a bit lower. Uh, river is quite a bit higher, so people will tend to spread out a little bit more because there's more spots to cover as well. Um, fish, are, fish tend to be more aggressive as well, um, once water clarity goes down a little bit, they're not as cautious as what we've seen in previous two episodes in early part of October. So I really enjoy it. Um, it's, uh, even though there's less fish around, I tend to catch more fish during that time actually. So I'm really looking forward to the next couple of weeks. It's, uh, it's my favorite time of the year to be casting lures, to casting spoons, casting uh, spinners and jigs, and even flow fishing bait and beads, and all of those methods will work. And uh, once the river gets a little higher, you start having all these side channels that are filled with fish and backwaters and um, you can actually start fly fishing in those waters as well. So lots of different options will open up as soon as um, water gets a bit higher. For this particular video, I wanna focus on one thing, which is the river level. 
um, the number one question that I get from people is usually, where's the best place to go for cold salmon fishing? Well, I can't really answer that and I don't really want to answer that because there isn't one static answer for it. Um, there isn't one best fishing spot for salmon fishing, for any kind of fishing really, but for river fishing, it's all based on the water level. So, okay, what I mean by that is, so when the river level is low, I have probably a half a dozen spots where I visit where I know the fishing can be really good. But when the river uh, level rises, low spots are no longer productive because what, there'll be too much water at low spots and fish will be moving on to other spots. So on the other hand, um, when the river level is low, certain spots have almost no water at all or the water is very low and um, at low spots fishing it's very very poor but once the river level comes up low spots will become really productive because there will be a lot more water at those spots and fish will be moving in and uh, those are the places where I would go to so my suggestion to you is um, for anyone who has not fished this river very much you should be walking it pretty regularly if you come out and uh, just pay attention to all these different spots um, how they look during certain time of year during under certain conditions when it's dry when it's low river levels and when it's high river level how they look differently and uh, make a mental note and even better write it down in your diary and uh, over time you'll have a collection of spots where you know you should be going to under certain conditions this particular graph right here is provided on the Canadian government's website and uh, I'll leave the link on the bottom in the description below. This is a real-time tracking of the river level in Chilliwack or any other river you can find in BC actually. And um, it's really useful, not just for um, knowing when you should go fishing, but knowing if it's safe to go be out there fishing. So. As the river level rises, fish will start moving a lot faster than usual and uh, water clarity will start going down again. On the rise, fishing can be hit and miss. So if the fish are still move, not moving very fast, the fishing can be very good. But as the river level rises faster, fish will start moving a lot faster as well. Water clarity will go down and sometimes the river can be quite muddy and that's when you should just stay home and don't even worry about fishing. Once the river level crests, um, when it stops raining, um, the river starts dropping. That's when you really want to pay attention to what's going on there. As the river drops, water will start clearing up again. Um, these salmon will s slow down their movement, slow down their migration. Eventually, they'll start holding at different runs again once the river drops down low enough. And that's when you want to be out there fishing. So pay attention to the graph. I look at this pretty religiously almost on the, every day um, during the fall river salmon fishing season. And uh, it has really helped me a lot. And you know, I highly recommend it. You should take a look at it as well. Don't just rely on other people's fishing report. Um, pay attention to the river conditions. And um, yeah, it's all based on experience. And just over time, you'll build up a good library of, um, I guess, fishing spots where you can go to and uh, that can really improve your success over time. Um, I know this is a little confusing. Um, maybe the way I'm explaining is a little confusing. So be sure to leave a comment on the bottom if you have any other questions regarding this. And um, if you enjoyed the fishing part of this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support. And uh, yeah, it's been really fun making these for river salmon fishing videos. Uh, I believe this one is the fourth episode this fall and I have a couple more planned out so stay tuned for that. And until next time, good luck fishing.